Hello friend. In a video on the main channel, we went through the casting process of this aluminium spindle plate. Now the challenge is to take this rough casting and turn it into something fit for a precision CNC machine. Let's have a look at the design of a typical spindle plate. It's commonly a single thick sheet of pre-machined aluminium. Because of its geometry, it's quite strong in one direction, but very prone to deflection in the other. Indeed, many designs could be improved greatly just by adding some perpendicular reinforcement. The longer the spindle plate is, or the more Z travel you're having on your machine, the more this will tend to flex and the more important those reinforcing bits will be. The challenge is that this spindle plate is nearly 75 centimeters long. It's way bigger than my poor little mini mill table. If I already had the CNC machine I'm building, this would probably be easy. Okay, well, we've got a straight line from there to there on this back edge. Now we just need to re-index so we can do this. So here's the setup. I've got the dial indicator there taking a reading along this area. I'm trying to re-index the whole plate up to the table. The plate is kind of bigger than the table, so it's difficult to clamp. Before we even started on the mill, this is how we made one of the faces even somewhat clampable. It left a nice finish, but not entirely flat. It takes a unique personality to get excited about the reading on a dial indicator, but after staring at it for hours, hitting with a hammer, clamping, unclamping, I had to include a bit of it here. There's a real tactile art to clamping things on a mill table. In this case, I'm deflecting both the part and the cast iron table each time I cinch these nuts up. It's about as good as it's getting. Let's just see what the height is doing. It's all absolutely classic accuracy, exacerbation, equilibrium material. I spent ages getting this edge just right and this one is now slightly off. It's 0.05 down, down this end compared to this. This section's all nice and straight. I'm imagining it's something about the way I'm clamping it. This whole edge is just off hanging, overhanging anyway. So we'll see what happens when we come to mill. Well, the finish on that seems to be coming out okay. My confidence level as to whether it's exactly straight and matching the other part I machined is somewhere between not very much and it doesn't matter, I've been hunched over this manual mill too long. That puts it quite low down the standardized straightness scale, but let's plow on and extend this top straight edge as best we can. This isn't actually going to have anything mounted to it, but it'll probably be useful for measuring later. Maybe you can hear that. I don't know. I can wobble it slightly, so I know that's not 100% straight. So now it's getting serious. We're going to blow it up and see what the results are. While I think I understand the principle of this method of straightening using a straight edge and blue to rub off, I have such little practical experience. I'm sure there's plenty of people shouting at the screen right now. Okay, this area here seemed to be quite contacty, so we'll just have a go at getting rid of that bit and down the other end. Just a few spots on the inside is stopping contacting a lot. I've set this up so it's exactly parallel to the X direction on the mini mill. And now we'll have a go at drilling out the holes that will hopefully line up exactly with the rails. Now they really need to line up exactly with the rails and we're tapping them as well. So let's hope this works. When you use a hacked power feed like this and don't have the mill handles, this masking tape around the shaft is one way to feel slash measure the distance. 
evenly spaced holes in a line it's almost a job the CNC was invented for. But it's still perfectly possible on a machine like this, especially if you periodically check with the actual linear rail to make sure you're not goofing up. One. Two. Here's where we are. Ooh. I've got this side on. The closer this plate is to the inner plate, the better, which means there's not a lot of clearance between there. I've just put a bolt in on the linear rail either side of these set screws, and then I'm just hand tightening them down. And hopefully that's kind of locked in the right place for the rail to sit. The purpose of all this is essentially to fill that gap there. So I'm using this, you buff it off between coats. This has already had three coats and now I'm buffing this back. It's going down towards this end, so we've got a bit of adjustment to do. That's as good as it gets, I think. Okay, I think we can be happy with that. Um, now we just need to make sure it's right in and out. Reviewing the video here, I think what happened was I unwittingly cast some kind of incantation that deleted the actual footage of me testing that. Here we are at the turning point where we work out if I've ruined the straight edge and made this part very difficult to use, or we've got a perfectly flat edge for our linear guide to mount on. The dial indicator suggests it's very parallel to this base. Hopefully it's in exactly the right distance. Let's take it off and see what happens. Little gap there that I'm gonna want to fill in. And the same thing here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little gap there where the two set screws are. Oh, much easier than I thought. What's it like? What's it like? <laughs> Great. <laughs> so pleased. Oh, look at that. Little bit of trimming to do. That's going to be a nice edge there for it. We've got two problems. One is if we try and drill down there, we're going to null up those 5mm threads. And the other is we don't want to pop this off the backside in any kind of big chunkery. So what I've done is I've made a little hole in a 5mm bolt and we're going to start with a small hole. When it's done right, metalized epoxy has an impressively high compressive strength, but very small edges like this can still be cut away by a knife. Bigger surfaces, of course, will need something like a carbide burr. I should say all we're doing here is tidying up some of the excess so the carriages won't snag on it. We don't want to mess up the precision cast surface. Is this going to work? Well. I think that's roughly it. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's, it's going. It's going in. Okay, that feels great so far. It's reaching the seat, also, always a little bit of a kerfuffle. 
Oh yeah. I think that's gonna work quite well. Just need to connect this up now. We might as well also think about bolting the spindle mount on. Now we've verified them with the dial indicator multiple times and on the actual machine itself. We have the satisfaction of pushing in the plastic dust caps that want to be completely flush with the surfaces of the linear rails. Partly attached, it's going up and down with this. To get this properly bolted on is awkward to be, put it very mildly, not 100% sure. By moving the spindle plate to the very bottom of its travel, this is gonna be more possible. I've got a torch, which is handy. It's loosely on the ball nuts the other side of that on and that recess when I turn this you can see with that loose adjustment there we might be able to put some epoxy resin in there tighten it down and have these tight without it bending the ball screw that was my way of getting around of doing all this super precisely I was originally planning to syringe in this metallized epoxy, but in the end I went for more of a putty-like consistency because I was worried it might drip over the ball screw or something like that, which I must admit was still a bit of a concern as I was mounting this plate. The on and offing of the spindle plate was made very much easier by the surgical addition of these notches, which allowed me to mount the bottom end ball screw support with the plate on. You can see the housing mating quite nicely to the plate down there. It's going to give us instant up and down, hopefully with very little backlash because it's a nice ground ball screw. Okay, serious problem. Check this out. It's probably like, I don't know what, half a millimeter. And it's coming from this bearing block here. You see this actually moving. So we're gonna to have to try and tighten that up. Once I'd recovered from that shock, it was actually a super easy fix. Just tightening the opposing angular contact bearings, sorted that out. Now when I push up or down on the plate, it actually rotates the ball screw. And we can lock that preload in just with the grub screw. The dial indicator, which is just sweeping across the master right angle and telling us how perpendicular it is. At the moment, it needs some adjustment. Okay, now I'm testing perpendicularity in this direction. We cut up some little stainless steel shims like this. They come in a roll like this, and they're just going below the bottom here just to get this alignment well with that done and the spindle mounted we really are getting scarily close to having this working i might even need to learn to use g-code at some point Maybe you're as curious as I am to see this beast actually cutting some material. If so, the video I will put here should satisfy that. If you got something out of this video, please consider shouting us a coffee on Ko-Fi. The link's in the description. You will also find on our Ko-Fi an epoxy recipe stroke guide as well as a CAD model for this CNC machine.